the above conference, they actually, it was the day that this apology was being given and they actually had it Online. right there at the conference. They watched it live. They watched it live. Tears. Mm, how timely. Several hundred go to those conferences. Great to hear about them. Now, I want us to see some of the faces that you're seeing all the time. We have some pictures and we're going to move through them quickly, but uh, here's a, now, is this the plane you flew into Hamilton Airport? Right. That's what we use now to fly from Nome, Alaska to uh, New Greenland and everywhere in between. And it's called a? Piper Shan 2. And that's the first airplane I learned to fly in, a Piper Cub. No starter, no generator. Started by turning the propeller. You had a bad experience in that uh, one. Yeah, a 200 hour mark. I had an accident. That's all in, in the book, uh, Flying Canada. Sorry. And then there's my wife. That's Greenland. That's, that's Greenland. In Greenland. You say Greenland? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Gotta get that right. And that's Brian. Now he we were talking his, about Brian. Yes, he had a tough upbringing, but God helped him find the. Uh, he found God in, as a teenager. But then he didn't really find victory until we came along and spoke to him about dealing with the trauma of his heart. He had his sins forgiven, but he didn't know, hadn't dealt with the trauma of his heart. All and Isaiah the 53, yeah, Isaiah 53, 4 talks about Christ dying to carry our sins, yes. our pain. Mm. Our pain. And he didn't understand that. When he understood that, he was able to give the pain of his childhood, father leaving, mother an alcoholic, angry uncle who raised him. Then he found freedom. Now he gave up his job as a seal skin factory uh, manager and is in full time ministry. Uh, Helping people heal from, the, heal from the pain of the heart, the trauma. He is a fantastic teacher and a top-notch counselor. Wonderful. He knows English, Greenlandic, and Danish. Yeah. Oh. And he has a wonderful wife. Tremendous. And so there, it's just exciting to see men like that rise up. So many horrific things, things to overcome. Yes. Suicide and alcoholism. But he puts his story. Abuse. He shows that nothing can happen in life that God can't redeem mm -hmm. and make some New. beautiful message out of it. Yes. Let's go back. Oh, there's a sweet moment. Who's yes. this? <laughs> well, that's the church leader up at uh, Connacht uh, Greenland, the most northern community in the world, uh, municipality in the world. In Greenland. And that's a, another lady from up there. I like the way they carry those, their yeah, children. Those that's children beautiful. are so cute. That's yeah. not a baby even. <laughs> and I like that. We love the children. And why we tell children's stories whenever we can too. We want to get to their hearts. So many of them and have the been And the children hurting. like our name Claire and Clara. Right. So it's very easy for them, children in the streets, to remember our names. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was planned. And that's our family. Oh my. Ugh. Five daughters, five son-in-laws, and 26 grandchildren in the rock in front of our house. Is, is this in, in Dryden? That's yes. in Dryden. In Dryden, Ontario, on Beaver uh, Lake. Wow. And just below there is where the girls learn to swim and now all the grandchildren, if they're there for a week, they, they pretty well live in the water. <laughs> do, do any of them still fly? Oh, they like to fly when they come back. Right now they're You raising, have to keep that pilot's license raising, up to date, yeah, don't you? And they're at the, right now they're raising next generation missionaries. Hmm. But when they come north, especially if it's in the, well, no, even in the winter, uh, they'll want to go up in the air once with their dad. There. But they haven't kept up, kept up the license because it's, it's expensive. Father, father, daughter thing. It's a beautiful story, an unusual family history. You're recording your legacy, all the stories, not just the ones in the book, but uh, we're going to want to hear more of them. And you're you're very astute at transferring the, the the lessons of ministry and of flying to our Christian journey. That's give, right. us a, give us a moment or two on that. Claire. Well, I wrote the, people wanted to hear about our flying stories, but I wasn't interested in writing just that. I got the idea that every pilot has to be on a learning curve and read, be taught, and learn from our mistakes or they're dead as a pilot. Mm. And the same thing in life. We must read, learn, be taught, and learn from our mistakes and not get bitter over them. Learn from them and be on a learning curve or we're going to have emotional, mental, spiritual, moral collapse. Mm -hmm. And so that's the essence of the book. And I use flying stories to show that we must be on a learning curve in life for Jesus. Keep growing. Now, you, you, you're not even hearing the word retire. Oh, no. You're celebrating your 50th of everything. Mm -hmm. of Apostle, everything. John was 90. Apostle John was 90 when he wrote the book of Revelations. I'm glad he didn't retire. Me too. Yes. <laughs> and Moses didn't even get out of the gate till 80. <laughs> right. <laughs> so you're good to go. And as are, long as we have health, and we thank the Lord every day for health, we really do. Well, I am thankful for this couple. I have to say, as I was reading about you, I, 
I was so moved. I thought, you know, these are like the saints of old, except they're still here. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're living that faith journey and it's stirring. I'm going to show you the cover of this book again because you're going to want to hear the stories. Even if you don't have the remotest interest in flying, uh, you will, your heart will be pumping. Flying Canada, 50 years of flying the Northland and beyond. And, you know, we, we probably need some more stories about keeping marriages strong because, yes. you know, oh, what we're is. doing January 1st, we're, um, we're just encouraging oh. people who are married to, uh, to love one another in practical Amen. ways, 40 days in a yes. row. Do you, do you have a, a little tip for us 50 years in? Well, learn the, keep, learn the dialogue. And keep on forgiving. And deal with your own past traumas. And now for Claire, he, he came into marriage, he was m much more talkative and, and vocal about what was going on. And, and I was I very- angry words and eyes. Yeah, and- You I, had he, angry words very, and eyes. That's right. Hmm. And I, Held was, everything in? Right, and was very quiet. So it didn't and there were reasons marriage. for it, but I needed healing from that, and he needed healing from his, mm. before we could even bring any kind of understanding to other people. So at 29, I got depressed and went for biblical counseling, and that's when the whole career started, to have a deeper ministry to the Aboriginal people. We taught school the first few years, but then we did the youth work, and then those guys got married, and then they, we did it with the marriage work, and now we're into deeper issues of the heart. Look at all that in there. Uh, you know what it says? It's always too soon to give up. That's so right. You, 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 you had a period of depression. That's right. And it led and you to get help. That's right. And, and I had a period of depression, not knowing it was connected with my quietness and keeping things in. Mm. Would you fly back? Would you fly in again? Sure. <laughs> Come see us? Sure. Wouldn't you like them to fly back and tell us some more? I would. Thank you for this because time Because in today. that book, there's hair-raising stories, near-death experiences, but God is always good. A God is good. In whatever circumstances that happen in life. Don't you just love them? I do. Thanks, folks.